Algebra 2, Concept 15, Synthetic Division and the Remainder Theorem. In this concept, you're going to see something that you've seen before. You've done synthetic substitution. We're going to use that same method, but give it a different name, synthetic division. This is a shortcut method to divide a polynomial by another polynomial, and specifically by a linear binomial in the form x, some variable, minus some value. Just a reminder, this same method can be used to evaluate a polynomial for a given value, which you've done before, and in that context, it's called synthetic substitution. So this is a very versatile process that we use in math. It's a good one to know. So look for, at the steps for synthetic division. It's like the steps for synthetic substitution. So notice the problem says divide that first polynomial by the second one. <clears throat> We're going to, step one, write the coefficients in order um, of descending exponents. If we're missing an exponent term, we have to put in zero as a placeholder for that coefficient. I notice that I'm missing an x term in my polynomial, so I'm going to have to put a zero in. So I pull the coefficients off, which is negative one, that's the coefficient of x cubed, four, zero, and nine. And then out to the side, I put my divisor but it's what number is being subtracted. So in this case, it's a positive three that's being subtracted. I always take the <clears throat> opposite sign. Then step two, we're gonna bring down that leading coefficient, which is negative one. We're gonna multiply three times negative one and place it up underneath our next term and then add on the vertical. Four plus a negative three is one and then do that same process again. So three times one is three, place it up and add. 3 times 3 is 9, place it up and add. Now because we're dividing, we want to know what polynomial we're going to be and left with. So if you look at step 3, we did the first two steps, and then the last couple sentences, it says the last number is the remainder. The rest of the, meaning 18, the rest of the numbers in the bottom row are coefficients of the quotient, starting with 1 degree less than the dividend. So if you look up at that original polynomial, remember our degree is three. So we're gonna start putting in a variable with one degree lower, so that would be to the second power. So my first number, negative one, that's the coefficient of x squared, plus and then x and then plus three. If the number is positive, I put in a plus sign. Lastly, my remainder, I'm gonna put it over what my divisor is and that's the original expression, that x minus three. Now, another way that you'll be asked to write it in Math Excel is like this. So you'll have your polynomial, and then it'll just have a blank with an r by it, which means remainder, and you simply place that number in. You do not put it over our divisor. All right, and then there is your polynomial that you get when you divide negative x cubed plus four x squared plus nine by x minus three. Let's try another. Notice that our directions say divide, so we're going to repeat the process. We're going to pull off the coefficients, see if we're missing any exponent terms, which we're not, and then we're dividing, in this case, by 4. That's what's being subtracted. So we bring down our first number and multiply, then add, and then multiply vertically, and then add. And now we're going to start one degree less than what we were dividing, so that's x squared, so our first variable um, exponent that we'll put in is to the first power. So 1x plus 12 plus 49 over what we're dividing by x minus 4. And remember, you can also write that like this, with just the remainder off to the side. Let's try another. So we're dividing. <clears throat> if you look at and notice that it's just in fraction form, so we take our top and we're dividing it by the second. I look at my terms and notice I'm missing an x squared term. So for my coefficients, it's one and then a zero, negative four and six. And then my number that's opposite of positive three is negative three, because that's what you have to subtract to get x plus three. Then you're gonna do that process again. Bring down the first number, multiply diagonally and add vertically. Then place in your variable starting with one degree lower and write your last term as a remainder over the divisor. You can also rewrite that as x squared minus 3x plus 5 r, or remainder, 
negative 9. Now go back to um, just the top of the sheet at the beginning with the vocabulary definitions and formulas and let's fill in those other blanks there. We can also use this same method for something else. Um, in synthetic division, the remainder or the last number in the bottom row is also the value that we, you would get if you substituted k into the function. You've done this before. So this theorem says that if you plug k into the function f of k, that equals the remainder. This theorem also tells us <clears throat> that if you plug in a value and the remainder is 0, that means your divisor is what we call a factor. All right, now go back to where you were taking notes. We're going to do fill in about the same um, information, but we just want to have it again in your notes so that you can really get this. In synthetic division, the remainder, or the last number in the bottom row, is also the value you would get if you substituted k into the function. So f of k equals the remainder. This is what the remainder theorem says. Most importantly, you can determine if a linear expression is a factor, if it divides evenly. And if it does, the remainder will be 0. And that's what that final statement says. If f of k, whatever number you plug in, um, are using synthetic division equals 0, then that divisor is a factor. So what's beautiful is we're going to use the same process. You don't have to learn anything new. We're just going to give our answer a little differently. You have to look at the directions. Notice the directions are different. They say use synthetic division and the remainder theorem not to divide, but to find the value of the function when you plug in that value a. So same process. We're going to pull off the coefficients. I noticed that I'm missing an x squared term, so I put a zero placeholder in. And then since it just tells us what our value is, we do not have to change the sign. <clears throat> we do the same method where we bring down our first value, multiply diagonally, and add vertically. Our last number now is what we're concerned with. That's the remainder. So what this means is if I took negative 5 and plugged it into the function for x, I will get 10. So this process works in the context of substitution. Let's try another one. So we want to find p of a, so in this case 2. So I do the process. I notice I'm not missing any variable terms, so I don't have to put in any placeholders. And my remainder is negative 15. What that means is if I plugged in negative, or 2, I'm sorry, into this function for x, I will get negative 15. We can also use the same method to determine whether the first polynomial, in this case x plus 3, is a factor. So once again, we look at the coefficients. And so that means we're going to look at the remainder, examine it. Is it 0 or not? So I'm going to pull off the coefficients. I'm not missing any variable terms. And then since it's in the term here of a divisor and expression, I take the opposite sign. I do that synthetic division method. And I notice that my remainder is 0. So that means that x, min or sorry, x plus 3 does divide evenly into that x cubed polynomial. So we say yes, x plus 3 is a factor because our remainder is 0. So let's try this one, x squared minus x minus 3. We'll see if x minus 2 is a factor. So I'm going to pull off my coefficients and then use the value of 2, bring down and I multiply diagonally and add vertically. I get a remainder. It's not 0, so that means that x minus 2 did not divide evenly. So I say no, x minus 2 is not a factor. Now you're ready for the teacher talk on this concept.